What is going on, hybrid shooters? It's Jason Vong, and I know, I know, I know, it's it's been a while since I uploaded anything, and I do apologize for such a long hiatus. I haven't even given you guys a proper Happy New Year's greeting yet, so here we go. Happy New Year, hybrid shooters. I hope you guys had a great, great holiday vacation. Hopefully you guys got to spend some time with your friends and family, got some great gifts, gave away some great gifts, and uh, hopefully you guys been setting goals for 2018 and have already started accomplishing them. And of course, have some money ready for this year for all the new gear that is coming out for 2018. So the reason why I've been gone or haven't been uploading as frequently as I should have been or have been or whatever is because obviously towards the end of December were the holidays. So I was just trying to spend it with my friends and family and of course Vivian. And right when New Year's hit that first week of January, I was just so busy prepping for my presentation with Zhuyun at CES. And the preparation for that sucked up a lot of my time because I don't know if you guys know this, I'm not the world's best presenter. I know how it's coming off on the YouTube. It looks like I'm very eloquent, very um, articulate, but really I'm not. This is probably like the 60th time I did this take and that's the beauty of YouTube because I can just easily cut out all my flubs. When you're up on stage, you can't cut out the flubs. It gets recorded to people's brain and hopefully not their cell phone either. But yeah, pretty much a lot of my time was just rehearsing, making sure everything is right, making sure my delivery is right. And of course, I needed photos and video materials for the presentation. And I need these photos and videos material to really help me explain how to do certain things because if I were to just explain it to you guys, it just wouldn't work. It's just easier for me to show you guys how things work. So that's how I sort of tailored my presentation. A, a little bit of uh, a little bit of a live presentation and a little bit of YouTube, sort of like a hybrid presentation going on. Eh? Eh? For example, here's a shot that I did of my friend George, and he's walking forward, and I'm just going around him like this to get this shot. And that's a good example of how to use the pan follow mode. Overall, the presentation went really well. I had to give two presentations a day uh, for three days, uh, one on the Crane 2 and one on the Smooth 3. So how did I get this speaking gig with Zhuyun? Well, I believe it was uh, roughly late October, maybe even like early November. Uh, my contact over at Zhuyun, her name is Anna, and she asked me if I wanted to do a demo presentation of the uh, Zhuyun products at CES. And having never gone to CES before and only hearing great, great things about it, I was like, heck yeah, I'm gonna go, let's do this. And really it's like a dream come true to be able to go to CES because up until last week, CES has only been like this thing that I would see on TV or on the internet, like when Tech TV was still around or G4 TV or whatever it is. And of course, the bigger YouTubers doing coverage of CES. So being able to go was just like, oh my God, this is it. This is, <laughs> this is awesome. This is amazing. I get to go witness some of the latest tech that are coming out between this and next year. That's, that's freaking awesome. So of course, I took the opportunity to go and what was nice was that my travel and my room was paid for and that was incredibly incredibly generous of Zhuyun and actually what was awesome and amazing about the trip was being able to meet the actual Zhuyun team because up until that point my interaction with them was only via social media WeChat and email so finally getting to meet the team just gave me a whole different perspective of them as a company anyways I'm going off tangent here let's go ahead and start talking about about some of the coolest things that I saw at CES 2018. So what were some of the coolest things that I saw at CES 2018? Now, this was a question that often came up while I was at the show, and I still honestly have a lot of trouble answering right now. There is just so much to see at CES that I don't think I even saw like 50 to 60% of it, and I was there for like four days. And not everything fit at the Los Angeles Convention Center, so there are things that happen on the strip as well, at like casinos like the Venetian or the sand so those I didn't even get to which is which is just hard for me to leave the strip because I had to I had such awkward times for my presentation so I couldn't even be gone for too far and trying to get back into the convention center was just impossible but anyways I'm, I'm straying off topic obviously the trending tech there were the VR stuff the AI stuff and 
a whole lot of cars. And I was just told to just go see the things that interest me the most at CES. But the problem was, I didn't know what really interested me at CES. Not because they were boring, but just more of the fact that I really don't know what was going on at CES. So instead I took a different approach. I just like went everywhere. I just got lost at like different parts of the convention center just to keep an open mind to experience the, the, the new tech that were coming out. All right, we're gonna start off with some of the Sony stuff first because this is a Sony Alpha channel. So we gotta touch up on the Sony stuff first. No new camera, thank God. Oh, our wallet is safe for now. I don't know about you guys, but I'm still recouping some of my, um, some of my financial loss with the uh, A7R 3 And I know a lot of people were expecting the A7S 3 and the A7 III, but I, I knew it wasn't going to happen at CES because, come on, CES, Consumers Electronics Show, not, not Cameras Electronics Show. So obviously they were gonna focus more on the common tech that are outside of the camera stuff. So I think we'll probably see some announcement at WP, WPPI, which is uh, happening late next month in February, yeah. Either that or at NAB 2018, which is in April. Those are more camera-centric conventions versus CES. So I had, I, had, I had reasonable doubt that they weren't going to announce a new camera at CES, even though they've done some in the past. And Sony did unveil Ibo, which is this AI dog. And I know a lot of you guys were like, WTF is this? Well, don't worry. I think the Ibo dog is just for uh, just for the Japanese market only. And I think the reason for that is because um, I think apartments in Japan are very strict about um, tenants there owning pets. So that's why there are these owl cafes, cat cafes, dog cafes, just for the people who live in, who, who aren't able to own pets at their apartments to really go to, to really pet the pets, to, to, to relieve some stress. And I guess the Ibo, the AI dog, is meant to be a pet substitute for people who can't own pets inside their home. So I think that's the reason for that. I'm pretty sure there's much more to it, but that's just my best guess. And Ibo has this, uh, has a camera on its nose so it can recognize family members. And there are touch sensors as well. So depending on where you pet Ibo, it will respond either positively or neutrally to you, something like that. But anyways, aside from that, I didn't get too many chances to stop by Sony. I was just too busy checking out some of the other stuff and obviously doing the presentation for Zuyun. All right, so you guys pretty much know I live and breathe Sony Alpha cameras. So you could say that Sony is my number one favorite tech company, but I'm also really huge on LG products as well. So you can say that's my second favorite tech company. My household owns like two HD TVs by LG. Uh, the monitor right behind me is a 34UM94P uh, ultra wide monitor, whatever the code name is. And prior to switching to the iPhone, I was using the LG V10, which is a phenomenal phone, by the way. And I never had any issues with any of their products. So when they announced two new monitors, I was freaking out. So one of them is a 4K 32 inch display and the other one is a 5K 34 ultra wide display. So both are loaded with uh, nano IPS display. Um, both also have DCI P398%. I think that just means like color accuracy. Both are Thunderbolt 3, the uh, not ultra wide one, the 4K one allows for daisy chaining. So there's two Thunderbolt 3 ports in the back, but not the ultra wide one. The ultra wide one only has one Thunderbolt 3. So you can't really daisy chain with that. Um, they both have one display port, two HDMIs, uh, one USB up and two down. And the estimate for the release date for the LG monitor is May 2018, according to B&H. So I'll have um, the links to these in the description box below in case you want more information as well as the pricing. The 5K one is the one that I'm most interested in because it's an ultra wide. As you can see in the back, I have one myself. I'm a fan of this 21 by nine aspect ratio. And I've been wanting a 4K display for a while now. 4K, 5K, it doesn't matter. It was just a matter of which one I'm going to get. And LG currently has a 5K monitor for Apple, but unfortunately it has a lot of mixed review. And I also wanted the 
Uh, the other option for me was the uh, cinema display, which is the same one that the Linus Tech team is using. But unfortunately, that is discontinued. And I heard because it's discontinued that there's like li like virtually no support for that monitor anymore. So I didn't want to get that. So when they announced the 5K one, I'm thinking I'm going to have to snag this one up. Both of these monitors are incredibly sharp. They are made for content creations with the amount of space and real estates that you can fill the frame up with any of the softwares you're using, whether it be you're making beats or you're editing videos. It just looks so freaking sexy. And I do like the 4K one as well. And when you stack two 4Ks together, it looks bigger than the ultra wide by itself. But of course, there's a split right in the middle. Um, for anybody who's looking for a dual monitor, even a triple monitor display, it seems like the 4K one is more than good enough. But for anybody who wants that seamless, long uh, monitor viewing experience, I think the 5K one is definitely the one to get. And that's the one that I'll be picking up when it drops in May. So Samsung was doing a lot of cool VR stuff. They had an area right outside of the exhibit hall for people to demo um, with the Samsung Galaxy 8, I believe. And there were several rides to choose from. We did the snowboarding one, and we also did an attraction called Skeleton, which had you lay down on your stomach and the experience is just you sliding on this incredibly long slide. And it was a lot of fun, but probably the coolest one and the one with the longest queue time is the one called Dino or Dinosaur, which Vivian got to do. And this ride just pretty much suspends you in midair and just spins you around. So it puts you in this prehistoric time where you just roam around with dinosaurs. I think I didn't get to experience it, but it's what it looks like from the preview screen. And it was just fun watching Vivian spin around and screaming. Um, I didn't do it because I didn't want to hurl at the end of the ride. And I think a few of the uh, uh, team members there were just like, yeah, someone did, did throw up after this ride. So <laughs> something that I didn't want to be doing at CES. I think it's really cool for Samsung to have these sort of exhibitions at like tech conventions. And I hope that they do bring it to like, um, um, arcades as well, like round one and Dave and Buster's because uh, my mom has the Samsung Galaxy 8 and we have the VR set as well. But the only things that we can really do is like maybe watch a movie or like take a virtual roller coaster ride just without the actual movement itself. So it's just it's just very limiting without that actual without without that extra dimension to to the VR. So if they had it at uh, if they have it at these arcades, I think it would be a hit. So one company that surprised me that I didn't expect to see at CES was Godox. So I had to go by their booth and check them out, especially when they just announced the new 8600 Pro. So for full specs for the 8600 Pro, look in the description box below. But for the most part, this Pro version has better color accuracy. The recycle time is much faster, even faster than the Pro Photo one by like a second. So the refresh for, for the uh, 8600 Pro is only 0.9 seconds at full power. So anybody who's using the A9 or the A7R3 will be able to take advantage of this fast recycle time. Uh, if you're using the older 600, you probably Sorry, if you're using the older Sony cameras like the A7R2 or the A7, you probably don't need to upgrade to the Pro version. Um, but if you're interested, um, here's a little bit more about the Godox. It seems longer, it feels heavier, but I like to think it's a little more compact over the original 600. The original 600 seems a bit girthy versus the new one is a bit lengthy. <laughs> but anyways, um, the Godox 8600 Pro, I believe the retail price is like eight or $900. Um, honestly, if you really don't need that faster recycle time, I think the original 600 is just perfect. But if you have the camera that can take advantage of this faster recycle time, definitely consider the 8600 Pro. Google was giving away mad prizes. Um, they, were have, they have several exhibits outside of CES and you could win small prizes like a notebook, a beanie to bigger prizes like a Nest camera, a Chromecast Ultra and a Google Home Mini, which Vivi and I won like three of those because we participated in different attractions. And a lot of these attractions that Google had, had huge lines, has a large queue time because 
the way that you interact with certain things, it takes like a minute or two before the next person can come in to try to win. So they had like a gumball machine one where you would put in a coin and you would ask Google uh, a certain question and it will spit out a random prize for you. And they also have a donut shop one with like conveyor belts running through and it would just randomly spit out either a donut or a Google Home Mini. So those were some of the ones that we did and there were a few others as well, but we did those two attractions and we got like three Google Home Minis. So actually we won like four Google Home Minis. So Vivian took home three so she can have it in her kitchen, her living room, and her room or whatever. And I have one which I'll be installing in my own room either tonight or tomorrow. But yeah, Google was giving away some sweet prizes, man. So were there any YouTubers that I met or saw at CES? I did. So earlier I was talking about how I would normally get my CES coverage from the big tech YouTube channels and I saw a few of them there. I saw Jonathan Morrison from TLD Today, I saw your average consumer, Austin Evans, and even the Linus Tech Tips team. So um, even though I saw them, I was too nervous to approach them because they seemed very busy and I didn't want to interrupt. I didn't want to like walk in their shot or something or like interrupt their voiceover. So I definitely just stood from the side and admired them from afar and be like, man, these guys are so cool. Except Linus Tech Tip. Now I saw them when they're not busy, but the problem was we were all in the bathroom and I really didn't want to make it awkward. I didn't want all of us to be peeing at the urinal and I'd be like, yo, Brandon, what's up, man? I, I love your cinematography for Linus Tech Tip. Keep up the good work. <laughs> Definitely I'm hoping to catch them next time when our pants are not down in front of a urinal. But yeah. But I did meet a lot of micro influencers such as myself. They stopped by the Zuyin Tech booth because they use a lot of the Zuyin Tech stuff themselves. I even followed Tomas around for a little bit, helped him shot some of his YouTube stuff. And Francisco Joel Hernandez, you know, we were roommates for a couple of nights before he left me for a better hotel. <laughs> Hey Francisco, you gotta practice safe shooting. <laughs> What's this? Uh, okay. <laughs> and now I have to get ready for the live show that I will do with Danny. So I think by the time this video comes out, that 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 live show would have already happened. So I'll have a link to that live show in the description box below. But guys, thank you so much for watching this incredibly long update video. Hopefully you guys have found the information here to be incredibly helpful. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in my next video. Peace.